All right. So we're just doing the second two. F G of X, we want to find G prime. So it's important. Well, what's the real basic skill you had better have if you're going to use the chain rule? The power rule. Yeah, the power rule. Okay, Finding yes. a function inside another function. Okay, yeah, that's, that's, that's like the key to the chain rule, right? Uh, if you want to use the product rule, you got to be able to see one function times another and so on. Those aren't as hard as sometimes seeing a function within a function. Then, of course, we want to have chain, uh, the uh, power rule, the quotient rule, uh, product rule, all those under our belt as well. Okay? So, what function is on the outside here? Uh, U squared. U squared, yeah. X squared, something squared. Oh, yeah. Right. Then, the, the inside, then, of course, we all see that is this quotient of two functions. Uh, that was a terrible choice of color. It's too much like the other color. There. Oh, there we go. That's better. All right, so we start with the outside function, yes? Yes. Okay, and uh, we take the derivative of something squared. If we take the derivative of something squared, how does that go? To a u. To u, whatever u represents, yeah? To u to the first. To the first. So two times u to the first. Then we multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which we need what? We need the quotient rule. Okay, low d high minus high d low d square, what's below? Right? Close right off the tongue. It really helps me. So low, I didn't tell it to my students until uh, late in the year last year, and uh, didn't realize how helpful it was. So. Were they angry at you? Yeah, they were a little angry. I would have been really mad at you. So low d high <laughs> minus high, which is x plus 5. Oh d low, which is 2x, or the square of what's below, x squared plus 2, quantity squared. Yes? Agreed? And then, uh, if, if we want to be sure that we'll, we'll most likely get the answer like in the book or the answer like in an AP multiple choice question, we would multiply this stuff out and combine like terms, we would factor out like factors, all that kind of stuff. So uh, we'll keep going. 2 times x plus 5 over x squared plus 2 times, we got x squared. There's only an x squared. Uh, we got uh, negative x. Um, the negative, let's see, that's a 2x squared, so I shouldn't have done that. Right, we got x squared plus 2. Uh, we got minus 2x squared minus 10x. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, x squared minus 2x squared is negative x squared minus 10x plus 2 over x squared plus 2 squared. Um, so you got any uh, Mr. Sir? Yes. I have a quick question. Yeah. So when you have the, this goes back a few steps, but you have the x squared plus 2 minus x plus 5 yeah. 2x. Yeah. So you're in the low d high, right, mm -hmm. for the top. Yep. Um, Wait, never mind. Good cue. I, I answered my own question. Okay. Um, and here, it looks like we just have a common factor, really, x squared plus 2. So our... Wait, one of them is squared. Right, but this is x squared plus 2. This is x squared plus 2 times x squared plus 2. Oh, okay. So we have a single factor of that. Um, so we multiply this by, uh, which is this 2, 2x two plus 10 um, plus a negative x squared minus 10x plus 2 over x squared plus 2. Um, yeah. They, they might choose to, to make it look like that. They might choose to get this to have a common denominator and put them together. They gotta be ready for whatever they feel like using. They typically won't leave it like this. Okay. They'll at least combine like terms. But uh, with some practice, it, it really won't be hard to see yours getting to there, your answer getting to there. Okay, so the the, the functions, the, the big function is overall. It's not a it's not a composition of functions. Right? The big function, the, the 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 thing at large here, is actually a product of functions, right? Got a product of functions. So we're going to use the product rule. Then we're going to take the derivative 
of this, so we're going to need to use the chain rule. When we go to take the derivative of this, we're going to need to use the chain rule. Yeah. So um, you can write out that little map that we've done before. Yeah. Like the product rule, we're going to have, uh, if this is u and this is v, we're going to have u, u prime v uh, plus v prime u. Okay. When we look at u, that first function, it's a function inside a function. So we're going to need the chain rule here. Okay. Same for v. v is also a composition of functions, so we're also going to need the chain rule for it. But keep that in mind. Right? We're going to take the derivative of this, and it's going to be a little bit involved. And then we're not done yet with that part. We also have to multiply by this v, like the second function. Just keep track of where you are, what you've taken the derivative of, where you're at in this process. Okay? So the first thing we're going to do is take the, the derivative of u. Okay? And u is, we're going to take the derivative secant of 1 half theta. Right, u prime is the derivative of this, d d theta, because theta is the, the independent variable. Okay. So we're going to take the derivative of this. How do you take the derivative of, well, the outside function is secant. What's the derivative of secant? Secant, tan, or secant, tangent. secant of the thing times the tangent of the thing, whatever that thing is that you're taking the secant of. Okay. Secant of 1 half theta times tangent of 1 half theta. And we'd be done if that was just theta inside there, but it's not just theta, it's one half times theta. So what's the derivative of the inside function? One half times one half. It's what? One half times one half. Derivative is one half, so we multiply by one half. Let's put it out there. Makes it a little easier to look at. Okay. So what is this? What, what is this? U prime. U prime. It's the derivative of the first function right there. And next is V, which is? Tangent one half theta. Tangent one half theta. And that's it, right? That's, that's it for v. That's what v is. All right. So we did that. So that's u prime, right? Then we multiply by v, and now we're on to v prime, which needs the chain rule as well, as we've noted. And we don't have much room, so I'm just going to write it down here. So we're taking the derivative of this guy, derivative of tangent of 1 half theta. What's the derivative of a tangent? Secant squared. Secant squared 1 half theta. Okay. Times one half, or multiplying by the derivative of the inside, one half. Times by the secant of four. Right, because then, so we've done v prime, right? That's done. That part just got done, and we're going to multiply by u, and that's secant of one half theta. And of course, this would be secant cubed. This would be tangent squared. So let's do that. One half times secant tangent squared, secant of 1 half theta, uh, yeah. uh, tangent squared theta, uh, 1 half theta, plus, plus so we're saying that it equals to this, plus uh, 1 half secant cubed 1 half theta. And I'll leave it to you. If you want to, you can factor out <coughs> a 1 half. You can factor out a secant. Right, this has a secant, and this has a secant, and that'd be about it. Oh, okay. oh. One half secant times parentheses tangent squared plus secant squared. Okay. Okay. Um, that is it. Without any other questions? Did uh, that well? No. Um, 85. Was 80 oh, what? 86. 86. I had a problem with that one. 86. Yeah, you don't want to know section. 86. Oh, the second grid. Who's got trouble with the first derivative? Got trouble with the first derivative. The first something. Mm -hmm. Well, this the first derivative of this one. Yeah. 
they have trouble with this? No, yes. Yes, we can have that. Yeah. Going backwards, yeah. yeah. Which is, we'll do that later. Okay. Not today, but later this year, of course. Okay. Okay, uh, secant squared of pi x. Um, if I just work the derivative out quickly, is that going to throw anybody out in the first derivative? Okay. So I'll work it out quickly, but explain myself. So I'm going to write this like so that it looks like a function contained inside a function and remind myself that secant squared means secant of the thing, then squared. So we have a function uh, secant inside squared function, and then inside the secant we have pi times x. Okay. So the derivative of the most outside function, that's the squared function, that's going to be 2 times whatever to the first power. That's done. Okay, then we're going to unpack it. We're going to multiply by the derivative of the secant of pi x. So the derivative of the secant is secant tangent. Secant of pi x times the tangent of pi x. Okay. Uh, then we're going to multiply by the derivative of the inside of that, which is the derivative of pi x. And the derivative of that is just pi. So we'll just put a pi right there. So 2 pi times the secant of pi x times the secant of pi x times the tangent of pi x. It uh, be a little easier to look at like this. Secant squared pi x tangent pi x. Parentheses around that. We good so far? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait. I can't. Secant times secant. Secant times secant. Okay. Uh, so that's the that's f, and this would be f prime. I don't want to confuse anybody. Now f double prime. Double time, double prime. Double time, double prime. Okay. Uh, well, here we have a a function. This is also a function. We're multiplying these two functions together. Um, we're also multiplying by this constant multiple of two pi. Constant multiple rule says we can just bring down the two pi and multiply it by the derivative of all this stuff. Oh, okay. let's bring that down. That makes it easy. Hmm. So secant so squared pi x is a function, and tangent of pi x is a function. They're multiplied together. So? Well, it's product. Well, what? What? Okay. You're okay? Well, we already figured out the derivative of that. We already figured out the derivative of a secant squared pi x, right? There. Yeah. It's this. Yeah. Right? So we did that work already. So when it comes time to do that, we're done. Okay, so um, for this function, we're going to take the derivative, all right, we got 2 pi, um, and if we think of this as u, this whole thing is u, and this one as v, then we have u prime v plus v prime u, right, times 2 pi. When we go to take u prime, we're going to use the chain rule, and as Anna already told us, this is done, right? So the work is done for that, that's nice. Uh, times v, which we, we don't really need to make any special notes about that. Uh, but for v, if we look at v, it's tangent of pi x, that's a composition. So we're gonna use the chain rule for that. And then u is just u. You can handle writing that again. Okay, so we got two pi times u prime. Using the chain rule, that work's done, right? Taking the derivative of this function, we've already taken the derivative of that function, it's this thing, okay? It's really like Inception now. Okay. Yeah. When you go to take the derivative of this, this is actually the same as that. When you take the derivative of that, you get this. Okay, so we just write all that down. 2 pi times secant squared of pi x times tangent of pi x. What's this? U. F prime. It's what? U. F prime. F? U prime. Well, well, that's a little okay. confusing. Okay, I think I see what you're saying. It's that first, the prime, right? The derivative of the first function, whatever that first function is. So we're calling it u just to avoid the confusion with f. So that's u prime. That's the, the function u, the derivative, chain rule, done. So let's check it off. Times the tangent, because that's v. All right, that's done. Plus v prime. Okay, so we have to take the derivative of the tangent of pi x. What's the derivative of tangent? Secant squared, secant, secant squared of pi x. Okay. Are we done yet with the derivative of this? Or do we have more to do? Um, it's pi, the derivative of the inside function, pi. 
pi secant squared pi x. Uh, okay, that's v prime. That's done. And then done what here. Then you Which is secant squared pi x. Lots of secant squared in here. 2 pi. So then we're done right there. Times. Then we're simplifying. Yeah, okay. simplifying is all I'm doing. Uh, times 2 pi secant squared of pi x tangent squared of pi x plus pi times secant squared times secant squared. So that's pi times secant to the fourth of pi x. And we can factor stuff out outside the parentheses here as well. Factor out a pi. They both have pi's. Can't factor out a two. This is the only one with a two. So that stays. Got a secant squared. We definitely have a secant squared here. Those can get factored out as well. So we get uh, 2 pi squared secant squared outside the parentheses, uh, and then 2 tangent squared plus secant squared. Right. And if we, if we were to take the third derivative, we've got secant squared there, we got uh, secant, well, secant squared comes up again, we take the derivative of that, kind of repeat itself over and over. Okay. Lost. <laughs> These pies. Yeah. Well, this uh, this pie oh, no. is this room up here. I know, but like, the, first, the first the first one I got lost was actually in the first room. I got one. Oh, the two pie comes from it. I originally got two. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, this two this two comes from here. Yeah. Take the derivative yeah. of the yeah. outside function. Yeah. Yeah. This pie comes later after we take the derivative of the secant. Right? You're going to take the derivative that's secant uh, pi x, tangent pi x, and we have to take the derivative of the inside, which derivative of pi x would just be pi. So I put that pi over there with that 2, rather than putting pi over here. Did you just say that was At the end. Okay. Yeah, so we do either 41, 42, or 44. Probably 44. 44, okay. Secant of x squared, not secant squared. Come on. Oh. And I'll put parentheses there just so that's clear what's going on. Find the derivative of the function. Okay. All right. So, what's the outside function? Secant. Just the secant, right? We're just taking the secant of something. All right. So we won't even worry about what's inside of that. We'll just start taking the derivative. The derivative of secant is Secant tangent, all right, so h prime starts with secant of this thing times the tangent of this thing, okay? Then we look inside, right? If, if we look inside a function and we don't just see x by itself, we've got the chain rule we use, right? So we don't see that, we see x squared. Now that's something we, that would be, like once we take the derivative of that, we'd be done, because that's a basic power rule thing. So we multiply by the derivative of x squared, which is? 2x and we're done. Is it? Yep. Cool beans! Secant of 2x, x squared, tangent of x squared. Um, oh, can we do 22 real quick? 2, half of 44, must be half as difficult, twice as easy. <laughs> Okay. We can see that there's uh, this function inside of the square root function. So it'd be a half power. Yeah. A half power. Yeah. Yeah. So half, half power. power. All right. So you could write this as rather than be inside the square root, you could write it inside the one half power. Okay. Okay. You look like. Oh no! I'm I'm good. Okay. All right. <laughs> Gonna have a look on your face yeah. and some full cheeks. Yeah, I don't know. I was confused because I just looked at the clock and it was like 20 minutes after. I don't even know. I was <laughs> Good story, Holly. I don't know. Oh, goodness. Oh, well. <laughs> okay, so let's do the one half power. Now, we could treat this like a quotient of functions. 
But the thing about it is it's the, the numerator is 1. Right? Can you have 1 over something? No. It would be a lot easier to write it as, as this thing to the what power? Negative. The negative one. 1 power. So t, t squared minus 2 to the negative 1 power. So when you raise the power to a power, we multiply the powers together. Negative 1 half power makes it a little nicer to look at. So we're going to take a derivative. Where you've got the outside function is, is something raised to the negative 1 half, so we bring that out in front. I'm a little confused with the negative 1 power. What's that? Does the negative 1 power just cancel out it being divided by one? It's the same thing. Well, it's dividing one, it's not divided by one. Did you mean not to bring the negative 1 power down? They multiply. Oh, right. Negative one times yeah. one half. Negative one half. Wait, so yeah, anything like one third one equals one. three to the negative one. Okay. One over something. It's the same as saying that thing to the negative one power. Okay. Um. <coughs> negative three halves, right? Negative three halves is the power. Multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is two t, and we're done. Do you have to do it that way or say could you have left it as a numerator of one and then quotient Could have and then like quotient rule. The only thing about that is um, zero. Yeah, zero. there's gonna be zeros in there. And then there's gonna be the dividing and simplifying and you're gonna wind up getting you know you're gonna get the same okay. But it's all gonna work out. Okay. Let's pass in look, our homework. Look, I do you How perfect it is! Oh well, nice. It's perfect. Three just row you. At the end of last class, we did something like the derivative of x to the third, right? Yeah. And what was that? Oh, three x squared. Three x squared. Three x squared. Look at, I'm gonna grab my notes from last time. Um, those aren't bad. And so we just treat everything like normal. Right? Normal as far as normal goes with that, you know, all the way to the chain rule. So if I gave you this. Oh. Uh, huh? They don't agree? Okay, we're taking the derivative with respect to x, but we're taking the derivative of a, a y variable. Right? So. But, but what is y? Y is. Y is f of x. Y is a function of x is exactly what you're saying, right? What does that mean to say that y is a function of oh, x? Explaining the function. Y is the dependent variable. Y is dependent on x, right? And if, and conceivably, like, there's, there's, there, there's some way you could imagine if you knew what x was, you could figure out what y would have to be. Does that make sense? Right? Because y is a function of x. Once you know what x is, you can find y, okay? That's not 100% true. So there's that feeling, right? Y and X are, are uh, related. Y is dependent on X, and so X decides on Y is. Right? Okay. Um, so this is just a function of X, right? Like, there's something, some expression with X's in it somewhere that would make up Y. Does that make sense? So if you take 2X squared minus X plus 5, or the natural log of X plus the sine of X squared, or something weird, right? but it is some kind of function of x, right? And we could, if we knew what that function was, replace, replace y with that function, okay? Does that make sense? Okay. So what we're saying here is that we haven't explicitly said what the function is, but it's implied, right? 
So there's explicit and there's implicit. What's an example of something that's explicit? And I don't mean like the warning label on your CD. Explicit. It's specific. It's specific. It says it exactly what it is, right? If y is a function of x and we're saying that explicitly, well, this could be y as a function of x explicitly stated as y is 2x plus 3. What about implicit? What's something that's implicit? Why? <laughs> Why is, yeah, it's implied, right? Something that's implicit is implied. I could explicitly say something to you, or it could be really implied because we're all intelligent people, right? Like, it's implied that the rules were up to not kill each other. Yes, <laughs> it's implied, don't kill each other. It's explicit that uh, the no name papers go back in that bin because that's the way I want it to be, but it's implied, it's implicit that you not crash your car through my wall. <laughs> okay. I shouldn't have to state that. It's not a procedure that we need to go over. Or leave right? things in your ass. Huh? What? Um, I was getting some food for you. So. Is it for us? Is it for us? Yeah. Yay! We get to it today, which means we're all well behaved. OK, let's go. Let's get moving on. Yeah. OK. So here, we're back here. We're back here. And now, this is implied to be a function of x, like this is a function of x. OK? So how do we handle that when we go to take the derivative of something that just says y? How do we handle that? Substitute. Will it be? Well, here's the thing. Say we don't know what the function oh, okay. looks like explicitly. Like without any other information? Or? Yeah, but what, what would we do if we could put the, the function in there? We would just do that, yeah, right? Sarah? Yeah, we write the function of three times the function of yeah, right, just like we did here, three times the function of x squared, and then what? Minus y prime. Times y prime, right? Whatever the derivative of a y happens to be, if we could ever find that out, we would multiply by that derivative. Wait, isn't 3y squared y prime? That's no, that's the function. Yeah. That's the derivative of the outside function, right? Right, yeah. That's what we're doing. This is just the chain rule. Okay. It's just a chain rule where we don't know what this function is explicitly. This is the chain rule when we do know what the function is explicitly. Right? Explicit, implicit. Okay. But this is not the variable we're taking the derivative with respect to. Right? When we say with respect to, we mean it's the, it's the independent variable. It's the run, right? rise over run. It's the, the horizontal thing. Uh, however you want to look at it. We're taking the, the derivative with respect to some variable. It has to be that way. It's the one that changes and causes the other one to change as a result. Right. So in the situation where we don't know what the function is explicitly, we just say, if I knew what the function was, I could take the derivative, and then I would multiply by that derivative. Right? It's like a placeholder almost. OK? All right. So what we're talking about today is implicit differentiation. Implicit differentiation, um, and oh, never mind. Um, and it's it's taking the derivative where we don't know why explicitly. We can't just say y equals blah blah blah. Y prime equals the derivative of all that stuff. Okay. So let me give you an example. Something like x squared plus y squared equals 3. Now, let me just draw attention to the obvious. We could solve for y, right? We could say y does equal explicitly this square root, right? We could do that. Then we could take the derivative of the formula. All right? You're welcome to do that, but what we're going to learn with this easy example is implicit differentiation, OK? We're always going to take the derivative with respect to something. Typically, it's x, or maybe t, as time is usually the independent variable in a lot of situations or theta. Okay. This time we're going to take the derivative with respect to x. All right? And this is just like any other algebraic idea. You can say it takes both sides. Okay? If, a, if this function, this, these are two functions, right? They're equal to each other. If this function equals this function, then the derivative of this function must be equal to the derivative of this function. Right? So we'll just take the derivative of both sides. We'll take a nice thin squad. First, derivative with respect to x here on this side, and the derivative with respect to x on this side. Okay? 
and the derivative, the, the sum and difference rules tell us you can just take the derivative of this plus the derivative of that. So we'll start with this one. Derivative of x squared. 2x. 2x. Great. Anything else? No, we're taking the derivative with respect to x, right? So that's done. Plus the derivative of y squared with respect to x. Y squared. Ooh, no, it's, it's we're going to do the same thing to y squared that we would do to, say, uh, 5x plus 3 squared, right? This is an example of, of a y. Right? It's not that y. It's not the y over there. But it's just an inside function. 2y y prime. 2y times y prime. That's just the chain rule. We, we treat that y like it's a, an inside function, just like we would treat any other function like an inside function. Right? We do 2 times a function times the derivative of the inside, y, just like we would do here. 2 times the function to the first power times the derivative of the inside function. Right? Well, this is just 2 times y times the derivative of y, y prime. Okay? So that's part, that part's down. What's the derivative of 3 with respect to x? 0. 0. Okay. Now, can you get y by itself? Subtract two x on both sides. Uh, we'll just divide by two y. We just want to get y prime by itself. We don't even care that y is winding up on the other side. We want y prime. So y prime equals negative x over y. To find the slope of, of, of a point in this graph with the simplicity of branches, we would need not only x, but also y. Can you? Yeah. Go ahead. Just plug them in. Yeah, you would have to know a point that's, that's on this graph, then you would plug in that x and that y. Right. So if I want to know the, the, the uh, slope of this graph at um, 2, okay, the slope of the graph at 2. Then I would put 2 in for x. Okay, we get 2 squared plus y squared equals 3. And then, uh, let's see, at 2. Oh, no, 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 not at 2. Let's say at, uh, at 1. Because why not 2? It's not going to work out. At 1. You try and solve that, you see what happens. Okay, y squared equals 2, so y equals the square root of 2. So that's be one over two. So we would put one in there, and we just found y is the square root of two. Put the square root of two there. One over two. Two over two. But like on twenty one to twenty eight, it's negative two over two. What's that? What do you mean? You just plug them in. Right. Did they give it to you? You don't even have to figure it out. You just plug it in. Okay. Okay. So. 2.5 here, I'm just differentiation. I'm going to give you one for yourself to find uh, y prime. Um, um, just do number four. four. And then we'll deal with one that has several different y's in it. We'll do that, that's what we'll find out.
Okay, let me head. So we'll start uh, up here. It's x cubed plus y cubed equals 8. All right, so we take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. That's an important thing to say, like every time, at least in your own head. We're taking the derivative with respect to x. And when the, the, the function of the, uh, the variable we're taking the derivative with respect to is key. Okay, so it's with respect to x. So if we take the derivative of this with respect to x, everything is business as usual, right? Because this is an x. Okay, what's the derivative of x cubed? Yeah, x squared. Yes. Okay, it's done. Even if we took the derivative of the inside function, what would be the derivative of the inside, which is x? What's the derivative mm -hmm. of x? One. 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 So we multiply by one. That's going to change, right? right? So, yeah. Um, plus, now we have the derivative of something with a y in it. Y is implied to be a function of x. So we use the chain rule on it. So we get the derivative of the outside is? 3y squared. 3y squared. Times y prime. And then y prime, that's the derivative of that inside function right there. Equals zero because the derivative of a is zero. Okay, now we've taken the derivative, we've got y prime in there. We may have several y primes in there in, in future problems. So we just solve for y prime. Get y prime by itself. So 3y squared y prime equals negative 3x squared. And y prime equals negative 3x squared over 3y squared. And that's negative x squared over y squared. Do we ever take the um Derivative, sorry. Uh, we ever take the derivative with respect to y? Um, yeah, y. sure, sometimes. And even sometimes, in the next section, we'll take the derivative of a function something like this with respect to some variable that's not even in this equation. Okay? So, so would they both be functions of that variable? Yeah, exactly. Could be different yes. Other times. Yes, different okay. functions. What's that? No, Exactly, exactly. And one of those primes, now what, when we say prime, what do we mean? <laughs> what is the derivative? What is the function the derivative do? Find the slope, the slope. Find the slope right? What's the slope telling you about the function? The rate of change. The rate of change, right? Generally, the rate of change might be velocity if we're talking about change of position. It might be something else if we're talking about something else, right? The rate of change of whatever it is. The rate of change of the dependent variable with respect to the independent variable. Okay, um, so let's make it a little harder. We'll take the derivative of something a little more involved. All right, I like that. Um, um, we'll just do number five. Okay. I'm gonna have you do it yourself. I'll write it up here, but you're gonna wind up doing it yourself, so you might as well get started if you can. So here we go. Derivative of everything with respect to x, so the derivative of x cubed, 3x squared. Yeah, simple. Yeah. No problem. Okay. Minus the derivative of this thing, so we might want to put this parentheses. So when we have a product, a, a function times a function, we call that a product, and the product rule. Right? Okay. So we have the derivative of the first thing. What's the derivative of x? 1 times the other function, y, plus. Uh, x, right? Mm -hmm. Times the derivative of y? y. It's just y. derivative of y, y prime. prime. Oh, no. Right. Yes. Derivative of y is the derivative of y. It's y prime. Okay, okay. we done it. All right. Done. That's done. That's product rule. Then, plus the derivative of y squared. What's that? 2y. 2y, right? The derivative of the outside is 2y. And then the derivative of the inside, we multiply by y prime. And the derivative of 4 is 0. Well, now, what we want is y prime, the derivative of y with respect to x. I think that was me when I sat over here and just yeah. figured it out. Okay. I might have gone a little. Um, what if you was trying to solve for something, right? So, what if you had, um, I'm trying to think, uh, 
x times the sine of um, r, or we'll just call it theta, that might make it a little easier, um, plus 2x, right, equals 5. So, okay, just making this up, just totally making this up. Now, could you get x by itself? Mm -hmm. How do you get x by itself? If you divide both things by x, you can have an x as a denominator. Oh, but if you do myself. factor out an x, ah, you get sine theta plus 2, and look at that, we divide by that thing, and it's gone. Right, Same idea. y prime is a, is a factor here. It's a common factor among this and that, so we should probably well, we subtract it. Yeah, get, get stuff off of that side. Um, first, let's, let's get rid of stuff first. So negative 3x squared. This is a negative y, right? So we'll add y to both sides, plus y. Uh, so I have negative xy prime plus 2yy prime. Does that look okay? Yeah. Minus 3x squared. I'm going to add y to both sides. That's a y prime. You got a y prime there. You got negative x plus 2. Negative two three y. x squared two plus y. what? Two, two y. y. Sorry, two y, and then we divide by that thing. Mm -hmm. Y prime that equals yeah. wait <laughs> negative three x squared plus y over let's say two y minus x. Which it, it's ugly. It's not you know it doesn't appeal to the eye, but it is it is a function. I think I got it. That if we have a point on the original graph, the original graph of this, okay, if we have a point on this graph, which wouldn't be too hard to find, uh, then we will know the slope of that graph at that point. Okay. The rate of change of that graph at that point. Uh, yeah, sometimes we will. Oh, no. Okay. But. Um, if we want to take the derivative of this, we have to take a second derivative. Well, we'll talk in general terms here. We've got a quotient of functions, so we have to do the quotient property, right? So low d high minus high d low over the square root of what's below, okay? And whenever it came time, like if we took the derivative of this, no problem. Um, when it came time to take the derivative of this, right? What's the derivative of y? Y prime. Y prime. Guess what? We already found one. Right? So anytime it came to time to take the derivative of y, we would substitute this. Oh, yeah. This is y prime. That would be it. would be what? It would be never ending. Yeah. Because then in that one, okay. they would have the y there. And then for that y, the y would equal that, which would equal that. The main thing that's important about this, right, the, the portion uh, of this that, uh, let me see how I can phrase this. Um, the most important thing is not being able to take these really complicated derivatives implicitly, you know, to take the derivative of both sides and solve for y prime. There will be some of that. There is some of that. But more importantly is what we do in the next section. Okay? And the really, really key thing is to be able to view one variable like y, to view uh, a variable like y right there, as being implied, implied as a function of some other variable. Okay? That's the important thing. To be able to see it and say, oh, that is not what I'm taking the derivative with respect to. I'm taking the derivative with respect to something else. So if that's the case, I need to use the chain rule here. That's the key thing. There will be more problems that utilize that knowledge than the ones that give you really complicated things and ask you to just take the derivative implicitly with no reason why. Okay? So this implicit differentiation thing is really a practice in recognizing that y is a, is a function of x, and we can take the derivative without having to solve for y and then take the derivative of that function. Because for this function right here, that's going to be really hard to solve for y, to get y explicitly as a function of x. We'd have to Probably, we have to apply the quadratic formula, but then the coefficients, a, b, and c, would be 1, and then b would be negative x, and then c would be x cubed. 
right? So when we have uh, b squared minus the square root of what is it? negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, like all those a's, b's, and c's would be 1, negative x, and x cubed. Right? So to solve that for y would be a chore, but if we use implicit differentiation, um, we are able to, to find what y prime is worth. Okay? Um, so, any questions about that idea, implicit differentiation? If you have multiple instances of y's like this, what's going to happen when you take the derivative implicitly? Got a y here, a y here, a y there. What's that process going to look like? You're going to have multiple y primes, right? Multiple instances of y primes. And how are we going to solve for those y primes? Yeah, we're going to get all of the terms that have y primes in them by themselves on one side, get everything else on the other side. Everything that has a factor of y prime in it, isolate it, factor out that y prime, and divide by the mess that's left in the parentheses. That's it. That whole process sounds simple enough, it, it'll be a little more messy because we actually have to do, we do have to take the derivative. And those are going to look like whatever they look like with secants of y plus x squared and all this kind of stuff. Um, but it's doable, it's definitely doable. Um, so how do you think you would do if I just had to do your homework or do you want to do like one more example? Another one more. One more? Yeah, like further up in like difficulty level. Yeah, because yeah. I always get to like the higher number ones and we never like get to the examples of those. Okay. Any examples really help? Uh, <laughs> Put your tongue in your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's mad as hell. Everyone look at the. Yeah, I wonder what number in the higher equation. What did you say? Yeah. There's a new uh, alcohol and beverage. Don't drink and drive. Um, here, we'll do, we'll do a hard one that's just hard for the sake of being hard. It's like, what is it on our homework? They're all challenged. No. But if you can do this, you should be able to do anything else. That is very good. That's the theory, anyway. Can you draw Three times x squared plus y squared quantity squared. Equals oh, no. 100 times x squared minus y squared. Oh. And that's the oh my god. I'm so excited to do this math problem. First thing. This thing. Are there any way to trade functions in this section? Yeah. I think so. Okay, here we've got a, uh, a constant multiple times this function, right? So we're just going to take the constant multiple times the derivative of the function. All right, so now we're over at the, at the function now. Got a, a function inside a function, right? x squared plus y squared inside of something squared. So two times that something. <laughs> to the first power, okay? It's okay, it's double elimination. You're not right. Everything. Um, you're going to multiply it by the derivative of the inside of that function. Okay. All right, which means derivative of this plus derivative of that. What's the derivative of x squared? 2x plus 2y. Plus 2y, plus 2y, plus 2y, plus 2y, y prime. Oh. Taking the derivative with respect to x. All right, so that was the derivative of the inside. Uh, we multiplied that by the derivative of the outside. Uh, we're done. With outside. With outside. Can you make it six times that? Uh, yeah, sure. sure. Next, we have a constant multiple, 100 times the function x squared minus y squared. So we can take the derivative of this and multiply by 100. 100 times 2x minus my y prime. I go through that because we just did that, right? So now we just get 
five five minutes. What's that? I said ver. Ver. <laughs> it's chilly. Um, well, let's see. We got a Y prime over here. Not much else, and a bunch of stuff over here. Um, but that's one big term, isn't it? Mm -hmm. See someone. Okay. Uh, so uh, let's simplify this up a little bit. <laughs> Six <laughs> times <laughs> x squared plus y squared times. Oh, let's see. What should we do there? For the beginning, like just get rid of that x squared minus y squared and put it on the other side. You have 100 by itself. You have 100 by itself? Yeah. Well, if we get that over, if, if we were to get this on the other side, that would mean dividing by x squared minus y squared. Then we have the quotient rule, which is okay, but. That's what I did. That's why I'm doing that. Okay. Well, either way, you're going to have an issue. Like, you're going to have. Yeah, I mean, we're all going to have issues no matter which way we go, yeah? So, uh, I know that there's probably there's some rule that says you can't do this, but at the very beginning, could you divide by x squared plus y squared? Because they both have x squared plus y squared. Um, well, this one has x squared minus y squared. Oh, okay. Uh, well, here's what we're going to have to do. Let's... Um, We already said that we're going to need to get all the terms with y prime in them, a factor of y prime in them. I'm going to make this a 6. Okay. Uh, a factor of y prime in them by themselves on one side. Okay. But here's the thing. Here is the, pr the factor with a, uh, or the, the, the term with a factor of y prime. But it's inside these parentheses. And in order to not have it inside the parentheses, we're going to have to distribute this stuff in here. Right. We have to execute that. that. Can you divide huh? by two? Can you do that to the other side where it's smaller and then move the y prime over there? Uh, the thing is, what we need is term with y prime plus term with y prime plus term with y prime, and until we get this out of the the parentheses somehow by doing what the parentheses are trying to get us to do, we can't use this term. Right? Yeah. Go by two. Sure, you could. Uh, we could just erase and get fifty and three. Oh no. Okay, but here we are. We got to do it. Okay, but we don't have to really. You know, it doesn't have to get harder than it has to get. Okay, so we'll just get uh, this times that. Well, two times three will be the six. It's 6x times x squared plus y squared. Okay, that's this times that. And then this times this guy here. Keep in mind, all we want to do is divide everything away that's not y prime, right? So we don't have to get too involved. Wait, what? This whole thing distributed into the parentheses would be 3 times 2x, that'd be 6x times x squared Whoa. plus y squared. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Incredible! I'm going to take this times that times that. So if we take 2x times 3 times x squared plus y squared, we get 6x times x squared plus y squared. And we haven't distributed to here yet. Right? So here we'll get 6y times x squared plus y squared times y prime, just to put y prime at the end. So equals, over here we're going to have to do the same thing. So we get 100x <laughs> 100x minus 100yy prime. Then we want to get the y prime terms, so that one and that one together on one side, factor of y prime, divide by whatever is in the parentheses after that's done. Okay? So we'll subtract this on both sides, we'll subtract this on both sides. Okay. What? what was the first that that you're subtracting? That. Okay. Or we could do it the other way, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Actually, if we add this to both sides, we'll get positive. Let's, let's do that. So we'll add 100y, y prime to both sides, right? 100y, y prime to both sides. 
So that'll collect those guys there. So we'll get rid of this on this side. Minus 6x, x squared plus y squared minus 6x times x squared plus y squared. Okay. So I'm going to um, save a little space and time and factor out the y prime in the same step that I write the next line. Okay. So we'll get y prime factored out times 6y times x squared plus y squared plus 100y equals 100x minus 6x times x squared plus y squared over, over right? Over that whole thing. So why don't we just uh, save again a little space and time and we'll just say we divided both sides by this division there. It looks gross, but it's done. <laughs> and we could uh, distribute this, uh, this negative 6x, we could distribute the 6y, and we might want to if our answer doesn't look like the choices of answers that we have. When you look, when you stand back and you look at the problem, it looks insane and difficult, okay? If you knew that's what you were going to have to do, you would be worried. But, here we go, I feel like I missed that wrong. Can we have the homework? Yeah, can uh, we have the homework? Yeah. Homework! homework. 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 I got all the way down to y over x. Yeah. Down to what? I got all the way down to y over x. I feel like I did. Right. Why don't I mind? What were you so excited about, Holly? Um, I read it through the paper. Yeah, I'm done. Oh, let me look at this a little later. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, prime the pump for next class. OK? Um, prime the pump. Okay. So, so I'm going to pass this out next class, OK? I'm going to pass out this, this piece of paper. Huh? No. Uh, next class. So, I mean, how many juniors do we have here? Four. Yes. A bunch of people gone. I'm going to be gone too. Five. You're going to be gone for some? I have a bank board. Yeah, so how many people are going to be gone on Wednesday? That's enough. Too many, we'll many gone. We'll have, to, we'll have to postpone the experience. But next class, not next, you know, next class that we do something, which okay. I, I guess won't we'll be next time because it's just, yeah, I don't want you guys to miss in the lab. So I'm going to, but I want you to think <laughs> about this. I'm going to, I'm going to, I would explain more if we were in class, but since we have more time, I'm going to let it draw itself out. What I'm going to give you is this piece of paper, okay, it's going to look like this. Uh, if you want to know what it looks like when you're at home, we're recording it right now so you can watch the video and see what this looks like. Um, I'm going to give you a jawbreaker, right, and a length of floss, of dental floss, waxed floss, okay. Um, and forget about what the experiment is exactly. I just want you to determine how would you use those materials to, to be able to fill in this information right here. The radius of the uh, jawbreaker at any given moment and the volume of that same jawbreaker you know, given the radius. Okay? So if you were to use the floss somehow to figure out the radius, don't just shout it out and tell me right now. Think about it on your own. And uh, if you're running into a wall, ask uh, a classmate. Okay? But that's that's going to be an integral part of the next class. That's it.